um, that would mean government investments. Okay? Uh, government investments are just starting to build a national fiber uh, backbone. You need that, uh, the private industry can't do that. They, they never get the payback on broadband the investments is 25 years, it's like building a road. So those investments are just starting to be made. It'll, there's about 65,000 crores being spent on the infrastructure between now and the next three to four years. Uh, if when that is done, I have no doubt in my mind that India will be the largest internet market in the world with about 300 million broadband users compared to the present 10 to 12 million. So and it's a scale. So by that time, when this arrives, all your business ideas will be there. You go for it. Uh, the watch out for one or two things. Uh, as for some peculiar reasons, as I mentioned, the early uh, success examples, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, have all been media. But I'm not sure that's where the future lies. You know, I think that really big companies will get built in healthcare. Some of these guys are trying to do that. Um, it will be in delivering justice very fast, so speeding up the decision making in courts, uh, in education, the mega opportunities in education. These three are going to be the really big ones. There will be many smaller ones. Uh, but it, well, you must, uh, please, if you do not remember anything else, think of the Bandra uh, ceiling. Do not start an internet business uh, by looking at the old concepts of industry. In the industrial era, you, as you must have been taught in all the IIMs, you got your efficiencies in supply side economies of scale. You know, you have a fixed cost, and then you're, you know, you have increasing returns, and it's embedded as an assumption inside your head that that is how you will make profits in a business. In the information age, you have to first erase supply side economies of scale. There are some very successful businesses exist even today in the internet, among internet companies just doing that. The internet and the web work through things called network effects. Those are demand side economies of scale. So there is a fundamental difference. It is very, very tempting, uh, particularly if you look at the idiotic VC community we have in India, so they push you into things that they know. They try and make you build a banner ceiling. Whereas the issue might be stay at home and work using broadband. You don't need to come in. This fundamental assumption change. So this is the opportunity in the next uh, 18 months. And you will use, uh, think if you are not extensively using machine learning, if you're not focused on creating network effects, it's not a true internet business. Uh, so you just remember that. There are challenges, of course, because by now the international companies have built giant worldwide networks, Google and Facebook and so on. You must uh, learn how to deal with it because if you you can you know like if you lived in the Mughal era you can be a Mansabdar and say I joined the Mughals and you know please let me collect revenue in this corner of India and I will give you soldiers. So most Indian companies today are in that situation. They're Mansabdaris of those larger international networks. But I hope you will you know this year all of you guys will think bigger and create those worldwide networks from here. So, am I talking gibberish? Does it make some sense? If you want any elaborations, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not. Well, I can keep talking about how much you've learned in IIMs, but I'm not sure how much you've learned in IIMs, so whether we should really even remember what we learned in IIMs. So, yeah. So, Ajit mentioned something called idiot VCs. What do you think, Aditya? Because a lot of our, uh, us in this room think that probably we need to start a business if somebody finds it, you know, the goal would be at least to start it and then seek funds and then only one can scale it up further. Do you believe that? So I, I, I actually tend to disagree with the uh, People are not idiots. I mean, they're trying to get returns on their money. And yes, they are quite conservative. And uh, VCs here, or VCs uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, today are actually not the first call when you make them when you want to raise funds. Uh, that's essentially because the cost of starting an internet business has come down substantially. Uh, I can get a domain name for five years for about what, three thousand rupees. I can get hosting for a year, pretty good hosting at that, for ten thousand rupees. That's good enough when you get started. I mean, I, I have two people here. Uh, they can tell that they just got started fine without any investments. So that's something that we probably need to earlier. So given that, VCs essentially today are looking for a uh, proof that uh, there's business, so they want to see traction, 
Second, they want to see rapid growth. Now, I can't blame them for trying to protect their money. At the end of the day, they manage risks. Uh, so, if you have these two things, traction, growth, profitability, that's where you get funded. The problem in India is that you know, the first port of call uh, for an early stage entrepreneur is the angels. Now, angels in India really do not exist. You've got some angel associations where uh, you can go and try and raise funds, but the way the process runs today is about 200 applications received in a month and about four reach the final stage. And uh, pretty much everybody is looking at each other's faces and saying, okay, who's going to be the first person he has to make? And then there's a herd mentality, which means that while there are angel groups with 150, 200 members, if you see, there are actually truly, if you're looking at about 10 or 20. And in each city, I can count them on my hand. And uh, each one of them either are in internet business themselves or they understand it because they've been entrepreneurs themselves. So yes, I think there is a lack of funds at that stage, but that, that's a problem that's kind of getting solved in a bit. There is a surge of incubators that is happening, which essentially gives you 3 lakh rupees and they give you some assistance, some mentoring to uh, get off the ground. Uh, they are still learning the game. Uh, I will not take any names right now, but there are some really bad ones uh, that you should just completely avoid because they start dictating as if you are, as if you've just taken a job. So they will give you money at the end of the month and they want a status report every day. Uh, so there are bad ones like that. And there are really good ones saying that, hey, how can I help? So maybe that's an offline discussion or maybe that's where you come down to start Saturday. But somebody, I think, uh, over the last 10 years that I have kind of looked at this uh, entire space, it's a lot easier because it's cheaper to start a business. Uh, net, net penetration is going up, which means that it's easier to and it takes less time to acquire customers. And uh, investment climate, in spite of whatever I said, um, or Hadith said, it's actually a whole lot better than well, Hadith started. Okay, Amit, uh, now we just have the last two questions that we put open to the audience. I just want you to tell me if somebody wants to start a business or leave his job or just start a business and maybe grow it a little and take it to a stage where he's feeling that it's making <coughs> enough traction, enough money and then he can go into, he or she can go into full time. How would you, I mean in brief, if you can advise them. And of course, you know, if you all want more details, I think all of them, uh, you could probably email or be in touch with them. I think uh, Aditya must share the names of the ones who are already So that, that's the whole point of having this community that we can share these things with each other. Otherwise, you know, you learn it the hard way. Well, Ajit mentioned something very interesting when we were uh, interacting. He said the concept of fail fast cheaply. I think the internet is something that allows you to do that very quickly, wherein you can take an idea execute it and within a week, fortnight, a month, you can actually figure out if it is working, it's not working, does it need to be pointed in or not. Um, can we have some, can I have a rough code in the room? What kind of money does it take to start a business end-to-end -end internet business? If you were to start today and then actually get your first customer. Realistically, what what is the sense? I mean, any Lesser and less. 10,000 rupees? Sure. I mean, uh, any other numbers? Okay, I mean, it runs a range from 10,000 to 10 lakh, that's the goal. Uh, well, actually, it is contingent on you, and uh, they did mention domain and hosting. But things have come to such a state where in uh, starting internet business, the tactical part of it is going to get as easy as opening a Facebook account or a Gmail account, really. So, my sense is that two things time and money. You can have a business up and running open to customers in as few as 15 days. And you can do it in as little as like 20, 25,000 rupees, less than that. You don't need DC funding. You don't need to take, uh, as Aditya mentioned, you don't need to report to somebody and then you know, have them on your back. So, uh, well, we can definitely have an offline discussion on how to do it. But uh, it's extremely easy, like that. There's a site for Shopify.com. You can go and explore it. And you can actually, I for the purpose of this seminar, I actually tested this yesterday. Can I'm preaching this, but can I actually do it? And yesterday, in two hours, I was able to set up the site end to end, not utilizing what I already know, but as a layman. 
So certainly the tools are now already in place and in the next six months uh, they will be even more streamlined. The, the basic thing is really the idea and if you can take out one or two hours a day, I mean after your job and that's exactly what I did also. I mean I had dedicated a spare bedroom and I used to spend one, one and a half hours a day after my city bank job. And uh, certainly I mean it's very easy to start getting customers and trust me the thrill of getting an order, the thrill of the first customer and then the customer referring your product to somebody else. That is undescribable. No amount of money, as Sadat mentioned, no amount of money can, uh, can match that really. So my essence is that you should just start and you should have a deadline in front of you. If you need the money, I mean 20, 25,000 is not a lot of money. Do not start with the VC first. Validate your idea and then only, I mean once it takes off and it's, start, it's making serious money, then only think about investments and funds for scale-up purposes. So that's all for my end.